Good evening, I'm Dennis Ward, and this is Face to Face. Our guest this week is a storyteller through stage, music, film, and television. Renai Morisot has been in numerous television programs, including North of 60. She's currently directing Rosanna Deerchild's first play, The Secret to Good Tea. Renai, thanks so much for doing the show this week. It's really great to be here. Uh, can you tell us a bit about The Secret to Good Tea? Secret to Good Tea is written by Rosanna Deerchild. It came through Pima Tewin that Ian Ross did here at the Manitoba Theatre Centre. And um, one of the first uh, plays coming from Pema Tewin to the main stage at the Manitoba Theatre Centre. How did you become involved with the project? I have no idea, but I'm here and I'm really excited to have the, the opportunity to, to shape her words um, uh, for the stage, for the main stage here. And like you said, a bit of a homecoming as well for you. Yes, I am from the Treaty One territories. My family is is from the uh, the used to be the St. Peter's uh, community, and um, we ended up in uh, Winnipeg and Selkirk and, and Gimli, and and so that's sort of been the stories that I grew up with was that displacement, and um, so yeah, coming home and uh, helping uh, and putting this story together is really exciting. I'm really excited about it. After all the works that you've done, is it uh, a, bit, a bit weird that this is the first time, uh, I guess, that you've done a, a play back home? Yeah, uh, especially here at the, the Manitoba Theatre Centre. Um, I think what is really a, a, a beautiful time now is that I'd like to call it almost like the Renaissance after the COVID era, right. that we have um, an amazing amount of people that are coming through writing stories of our lived experience. And I'm always, you know, in the work that I have done as a, a theater creator, as a director, as a writer, um, uh, supporting uh, the work of, of uh, a community about our stories, is how do we make hope actionable when it comes to the challenges we experience with, with uh, those systems that, that stopped us from telling our stories? And now we're telling our stories. Uh, I'm going to get more to that in a little bit. Um, I guess going back to last year, though, uh, kind of post-pandemic, was uh, White Noise. Uh, can yes. you tell us a bit about that play and your work there? Well, um, White Noise was written by the late Taryn Kutanehu, uh, Dene Sulin, um, a young fellow that uh, was living in, in um, Vancouver. Um, uh, Kathleen Flattery was supporting him as a dramaturge to put that story together. Uh, Savage uh, Society, Savage Productions, along with uh, Firehall Theatre, had produced that show last year, which was really um, a lot of people wanted to, you know, wanted to to see it. So we're bringing it back again. So once I'm, uh, my work here is completed uh, with um, uh, Secrets to Good Tea, I get to go back to Vancouver and help shape that story once again. Uh, many of our viewers will no doubt uh, recognize you from North of 60 and that <laughs> incredible run, but what led you down the path to theater? Well, I think the, the closest thing um, for, to theater for me is, is, is our storytelling. Is that when we, we tell our stories, um, from what I've, what I've learned, is that when we tell our stories, it's important to understand who the audience is. Um, because some stories you can't tell to ch with children around and some stories can be the same story with children that are that are present. I feel that theatre is the closest uh, uh, relative um, uh, to, to our oral traditional storytelling and what I love about it is, is the conversations that you have with actors that are embodying these, these characters and I've always said that storytelling is a form of leadership because in order to, to tell a story, who are you representing? In what way are you wanting to shape our, our future when it comes to understanding our cultural past and how that cultural past is what we, um, that shapes our future? What are you hoping that uh, people take away, the audience takes away from The Secret to Good Tea? <laughs> Besides the humor? <laughs> um, I think when we're talking about um, our experiences with residential school, with our displacement from, from our lands and waters, 
when we're talking about sort of those colonial forces that have um, where we had to navigate I think what is beautiful about the secrets to good tea is Rosanna Deerchild has really taken a personal story of her own lived experience and is sharing it to uh, to for Canadians to see and I think what is so beautiful about this story is that no matter when we talk about the traumas that we've experienced there is always hope that is made actionable by how our culture frames our relationship to those experiences and how it gives us that sense of hope and um, redefining within our old traditional ways of being and doing so I think that for me the play and how the actors uh, are, are um, embodying these characters is that they too are bringing in their own lived experiences and so we had um, um, Wase come in, uh, Healing Center come in to, to talk with the, the actors because this work can, is triggering because we all have that lived experience in one way, shape and form. And so um, my work as a director on it and as a facilitator of it is to create a safe space for, those, um, for that to happen. Awesome stuff. Uh, Renai, so much more to talk about here. We're just going to step aside for a quick break. But as we do, uh, here's a little of Rosanna Deerchild talking about The Secret to Good Tea. We'll be right back on Face to Face. Uh, well, The Secret to Good Tea is my first play ever, 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 ever. So um, it is uh, set shortly after the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's um, calls to action were released uh, about a year or so. Um, and it is a conversation, it is a study of a relationship between a mother and daughter trying to reconcile the mother's residential school past. Um, and the daughter trying to reconcile the fact that she's in fact an intergenerational uh, survivor of, of, this, um, of this genocide. And it's a study in how they walk through that pain together. Welcome back to Face to Face. Our guest this week is Renai Morso and uh, talking about uh, some of the work that you've been doing. Uh, a lot of your theater work deals with reconciliation. Uh, do you think theater has a role to play in reconciliation? Well, I think we're all kind of navigating what that is, but I think for First Nations and for our people, uh, we've been reconciling for a long time, you know, uh, within our own families, within our own communities within our ways of, of dealing with the systems that are, you know, health and education and law. I mean, we've been, we've been reconciling for a long time. In a sense, uh, Canada and Canadians are, are understanding that in a different way than, than we have been because it's something that I think for theater and for art, um, we're sort of on the pulse of, of pushing the envelope uh, forward in, in getting uh, Canadians in our own communities um, to affirm in our own communities, but for Canadians to see where we're wanting to go and what our future holds. Do you feel though that uh, you know, non-Indigenous uh, audience members who come and see uh, The Secret to Good Tea or, or something like White Noise, that that uh, helps push along maybe the dialogue? <laughs> yeah, probably a little bit. Um, I think that's the greatest thing about uh, uh, Secrets to Good Tea uh, Rosanna Deerchild's piece and the late Taryn Cutaneo's piece, White Noise, is that humor has a way of breaking down the, the hierarchy and it, it, the, the way of breaking down um, those, those barriers that we might have. Because, you know, we all like to laugh. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in our own human condition, we all have silly things that we do regardless of, regardless of culture. <laughs> but in the case of, of sometimes our humor as, uh, can be pretty dry. Um, some people might not get it, but we do. <laughs> so sometimes there's some humor in there as well. Do you think, as somebody who's been at this for quite some time, uh, do you think that there's more space for Indigenous stories in the theater these days? Oh, absolutely. I think what we were fighting for 20 years ago, um, what we were fighting for 15 years ago, for 10 years ago, to for five years ago in terms of having our voices on the main stage, um, has been a long process, has been a long way of, of trying to navigate those systems 
you know, that, that Euro-Canadian theatre system is a process, is, is a way of how, th you know, production is supposed to be, theatre production is supposed to be. And so sometimes our stories didn't have a place there. Um, I think that, you know, for uh, Secrets to Good Tea um, and through the Royal Manitoba Theatre Centre in opening their main stage for this story, I think Canadians are going to get a, a window into to how we have to reconcile not only with our own families but within um, our ways of, of being within the city of Winnipeg. I think for people to come and see the play um, will really allow will allow them to have a little snapshot of what we're our experiences in our families. Yeah this really feels like uh, you know the big screen here having it uh, debut here. Yeah absolutely. Um, were there challenges that stick out to you uh, over that period of time to get to where we are now today that uh, you might have faced as, as an Indigenous creator, director? Oh, well, it, I'd have to say it's still happening in terms of uh, uh, theatre productions, theatre companies not understanding some of our protocols when it comes to telling our stories. Um, you know, we have a lot of uh, conversations with people talking about equity, diversity, um, the, uh, opening up um, and understanding that, you know, uh, through what, what is reconciliation. But what it really comes down to is what is our attitudes and behaviors when it comes to other? What is our attitudes and behaviors and how we want to navigate the systems and how do we open it up to, to those other voices? And I think that um, we're getting, there's more people, uh, more Indigenous people that are creating theater film and television, music and song, and I think that um, after the COVID, I'd like to think of it more like a, uh, like a renaissance, that there is a lot more opportunities for our people to have their stories told in those, those genres. You know, uh, the film and television industry now has the Indigenous Screen Office, yes, there's yes, um, yes. music labels that Absolutely. are Indigenous only. Uh, does the theatre have anything like that or, or something like that needed to, to push forward these stories? Well, we do have that. I think that there's organizations um, uh, like the Talking Stick Festival that's, that's um, done by Margot Kane in Vancouver. That, has, uh, that brings people not only from Turtle Island but from Aotearoa, New Zealand and Australia to come and share stories about what, uh, you know, the similar stories of, uh, of our celebration of our cultural practices and our resistance and resilience to the colonial forces that are in our lives. I'd like to believe that the stories that I, when we talk about futurism, say for instance in, in, in film, um, how much time do we put into the stories of where we're fighting about the systems that have hindered our voice? And how much time do we put into stories where we celebrate our culture, where we celebrate our language, where we celebrate those songs and dances and, and stories of, of the land? And I am looking forward to seeing a lot more of that, with, especially with the next generation of storytellers coming up. I uh, hope we can talk a little bit about SRO, Single Room Occupancy, mm, yes. a, a play that was mm. about an Anishinaabe woman in Vancouver's mm. downtown east side. But there was much more to that than just the play. Can you tell us about that project? Um, Urban Inc. Productions um, is a uh, nonprofit theater organization in Vancouver. Um, they um, did a project with uh, Brenda Prince, who in fact is from, this le from Manitoba. Um, she wrote a play called um, SRO, and through that, um, it was um, uh, tailored also with doing some community engaged art. And what that means is basically what, um, what I had uh, uh, curated with the late Sophie Morasti was a six month process where we worked with um, Indigenous women that were homeless. Uh, some of them were in single room occupancies, which is what SRO stands for. And, um, the idea of that project was that, you know, art has a way of healing. Art has a way of, of creating a safety net for some of the stories that these, these women had told. Um, some have, um, can't go back to their communities because of, of uh, challenges um, within their families. Others can't go back because they don't know, because they were part of the 60s scoop. So all of those kind of stories and, and how those women found themselves in the downtown east side 
single room occupancy was a community engaged process where these eight women shared their stories and myself and the late Sophie Morasti um, helped shape those stories in, in a uh, dramaturgical way if you will in just asking questions about what uh, where their hope was and some of the experiences that they had that ran with SRO single room occupancy a play that was written by uh, Brenda Prince so I think art can be um, in those situations be very uh, healing and giving opportunity for for people to understand what their restitution is what their resilience is and in naming it and through the stories that they tell very cool project um, you know you do a lot of work with youth and with uh, indigenous women vulnerable populations uh, as somebody who's so busy it might be easy to uh, you know not do that type of work but what why is that work important for you uh, hmm. I, I think that um, creating works of art is an opportunity for people to to uh, find their voice, you know, to, to look at possibilities of, 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 of the kind of stories that are kind of bubbling up inside them. And uh, through a series of questions that I ask, through a series of silly exercises, theatrical exercises, a lot of the, the, the people that I've worked with have been able to create theater, uh, music, uh, song, uh, visual art even, especially for the SRO project. Um, I think the, 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 the very fact that we get to have the opportunity to tell our stories within a variety of genres, um, again, is, is not only a form of restitution and healing, um, but it's our form of reconciling with our past as, as uh, Indigenous people within the, the Canadian system. And I think that art allows that to, to, to be present. Good stuff. Uh, Renee, I have much more to talk about with your art. We just have to step aside for one more quick break, and then we'll continue the conversation here on Face to Face. Welcome back to Face to Face. This week we're here at the Royal Manitoba Theatre Centre. Our guest is Renai Morso, who's directing uh, Rosanna Deerchild's The Secret to Good Tea. Uh, mm. Renai, we're talking about uh, a lot of your theatre stuff, but you also were, like we mentioned, North of 60 X-Files. Many, many uh, television and, and film credits uh, to your name. How did you get involved in acting? I have no idea. It just sort of happened, and I've never gone to school for, for any of the stuff that I'm doing today. I always look at job boards going, I wonder what I'm going to be when I grow up. <laughs> and I realize, I guess I'm an artist. Um, I think part of uh, being an artist has always been about how uh, navigating, navigating different places that I've been in, navigating different situations that I've, that I've, uh, uh, that I've been in. S uh, storytelling, I love storytelling. I love the ability to help support uh, writers that are that are that have written amazing works as a as a director and facilitator. Um, I love um, creating songs uh, within Cree and Soto um, that uh, are part of McGraw music and um, and I think that's just sort of uh, I'll probably still look at job postings just because that's part of what what I do. But mm -hmm. I guess I should accept that I'm an artist. Uh, any of those acting roles uh, really stand out for you? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I love acting. I think acting is a great thing. I think that there's people way better at it than I am, so I'm going to let them do that. Um, I've um, I had a chance to work on a couple short films. I teach um, over at uh, Capilano University's film program in Indigenous Studies and have um, supported the work of Indigenous, emerging Indigenous filmmakers, so part of uh, again, you know, the, in a dramaturgical sense and supporting young, um, young um, Indigenous um, artists that are coming up and trying to find out what their voice is, where, what is their position in the world and how are they going to put that um, and shine a lens on it. So I think those are the kind of stories that I love to explore and the curiosity, you know, like what is the pulse of what our young people are into today? How is social media impacting um, their uh, forms of communication. You know, in what way are we wanting to shape uh, what our future is? And I think for our young people, so many of us 
have done so much work in allowing this generation of storytellers to to not have to deal so much with the systems that stop them from sharing their voices and I just I'm so honored to be uh, to see that happening you know yeah. as somebody who's you know teaching up and coming uh, filmmakers uh, creators uh, are you inspired by what's coming up in the next generation oh absolutely I think one of the 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 main things that I'm, I'm feeling, and, and I want to acknowledge that all of those, um, uh, the late Gil Cardinal, um, you know, had made uh, uh, films and, and, and all of these uh, filmmakers that had to fight within the systems of funding, had to fight within the systems of, of having their work supported by independent productions and starting their own production companies. I think what we've done is we've laid out a platform for the next emerging um, uh, filmmakers and storytellers and that uh, I hope that they don't have to have the same fight that we have had to fight for for the last 20 or so years. Uh, as you mentioned you're also a founding member of a musical group, uh, mm -hmm. you got theater, uh, film and television. Uh, do you have a favorite of the three? Uh, right now The Secrets to Good Tea <laughs> is my favorite at this point. Um, there is something about when a new work gets to be on stage. There's something about the fact that this play has never been on stage before. And I've, I've uh, as with White Noise, the late Taryn Cuccineo's play, that was a new work as well. Uh, Renai, whether it's music or, or theater or, or a lot of the, your acting roles as well, tradition and culture seems to be uh, at the forefront of those. Uh, has that been by design for you? As an urban indigenous woman that has always lived in cities, I've never lived on a reserve. I am registered to Peguis. Um, I've always had a, a combination of, especially living in Vancouver for the last 30 or so years, um, elders like the, the late Woody Morrison, um, Marge Cantron White, uh, Marge White, who's um, uh, Macholneth. These are some of the elders that have made their home in, in urban centers. Um, here in, in, in Winnipeg, I've had the honor of working, um, uh, you know, and, and hearing the words of uh, Winston Watney when we first began our, our production here, um, as well as uh, David Blacksmith. So the, all of these people have sort of helped hone what my uh, world view is, if you will. And um, I'm really honored that I, as an urban indigenous person, get to create music and theater and film and uh, look at the possibilities of what that will evoke you know in in our cultural uh, continuity in the future well Renee, it's been a great pleasure to be able to sit down with you here this week uh, best of luck with the secret to good tea going back for the second run of white noise and all the other projects you have coming up that's great thank you very much and that is all the time we have for this week's show uh, this episode and past episodes are also available as podcasts. You can find those wherever you download your podcasts. And The Secret to Good Tea uh, running now until the end of April in Winnipeg if you get the chance to check it out. I'm Dennis Ward. Thanks so much for tuning in this week to Face to Face. We'll see you back here next week.